Hi there, great to have you with us. Welcome to our King's Church West Lothian um, kind of online version of our meeting together this week. We're really looking forward to hearing from Luke as he preaches to us on all that the cross of Jesus has achieved and spending some time hearing from the Bible and worshipping together. Just to get us started, let me read you this call to worship based on some of the, the Psalms that you find in the Bible. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall declare your praise. Enjoy.
Hi everyone, it's great to be able to speak to you this afternoon. I hope you've had a really lovely weekend enjoying the glorious sunshine and even being able to travel outside of West Lothian perhaps, which is very exciting as much as we love this place and we've been able to see some family this weekend which has just been really great. Today at the start of this message, I just want to say to you that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you and the greatest way that he has shown his love for you is by dying for you at the cross, by giving himself for you. And in the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20, Paul is speaking. He says, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And that's what we have uh, started thinking about in this series of preachers. That's what we're going to carry on for the next couple of weeks, thinking about God's incredible saving love shown at the cross as Jesus died for you and he died for me. And I just really hope that the love of God just comes across in a fresh way today, that you receive his love afresh. And you know, it's really easy, it's incredibly easy for us to sometimes doubt the love that Jesus has for us. This world, this life throws so many things at us that it can be easy to doubt and to, to worry or doubt that he doesn't care or he's not close at this particular time. But be reminded, Jesus loves you and he died for you as an expression of that love. That shows us just how great his love is for each of us. And as I said, we're exploring that together, uh, this, this series of preachers on the cross of Christ. And today we are thinking about another word that the Bible uses to describe salvation. And it's this word, redemption, redemption. In a nutshell, what is redemption? Well, the way I see it, redemption has two interweaving threads that help us to really see what the heart of it is. And at its most basic, to redeem is to buy or to buy back, whether as a purchase or as a ransom. But also redemption is about being liberated. It's about being freed and rescued from bondage, from slavery, from captivity. So if you imagine yourself as a slave, held captive, powerless and helpless, 
And then you imagine someone else coming to pay the price of the ransom so that you can go free. That's a pretty good idea of what the heart of redemption is. And I'm going to talk about three P's, three P's. So plight, price and purchase. Plight, price and purchase. I'll explain these strange words as we go along. So first of all, plight, our plight, our, our condition, our state. So what have we been redeemed from? Now you will have heard this famous phrase, do you want the good news first or the bad news? Well, today guys, we're gonna start off with the bad news. And as Christians, we speak of the gospel, Jesus giving himself for us in our place. We think of that as good news, and it really is. It's the most wonderful announcement, uh, a news flash of the best kind. And one of the things that makes it such good news is actually that the bad news is so bad, so desperate. Now, <laughs> to give such a, a kind of less significant example, um, it's, it's one of the reasons why lots of us, maybe it's just me and Shara, but I'm pretty sure there's others out there, even in the church, who love programs like DIY SOS. And DIY SOS always starts with these heartbreaking life stories of families that are just in desperate situations. Do you know, this? the, the bad news of their situation is so bad. But then they go on, this team comes in and they revamp their house, their gardens, they completely renovate everything. And it's incredible. The transformation is so incredible because the bad news was so bad and it makes the good news so much greater, so much sweeter, so much better. And we're going to start with the bad, but we're going to see how that makes the good news so good. And the bad news is our plight. It's our situation. And this isn't just hypothetical, okay? It's not just a theory. You might remember how at many times you have been far from God, that you may have even, even turned from God, rejected him, you may have sensed in your life a spiritual, just a disconnection from God. To be honest, you, you might not have realised it at all. Maybe you wouldn't call yourself a Christian. Maybe you don't really know Jesus, have a relationship with him. Well, the Bible gives us some concrete ways that we can uh, see our condition, our plight. Um, I'm just going to give us two, but there's many. And here are two ways that we need to be redeemed. The first is to be redeemed from sin. Sin. Colossians 1, uh, 13 to 14, it says that God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And there's a couple of other verses that go along similar lines, Hebrews 9.15, Ephesians 1.7. And it's this link between our need for redemption and our sin. And the truth is we need, each of us need to be rescued from our sin. Everything that we've ever done or said or thought that doesn't honour God. Have you ever hurt people, whether it's a physical or an emotional thing? Have you lied or gossiped? Have you envied others or just had a selfish attitudes? Do you know, I'm pretty sure it's true because it's true for me. Well, these are all sin. These are all sin. And we're powerless to rescue ourselves from these sins, from these different situations that we put ourselves into. We need a redeemer. The second thing I want to talk about is how we need to be redeemed from our past. First Peter 1 verse 18 says this, 
For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The New Testament describes our life before Christ as empty. Another way of saying it is futile. This expresses something of meaningless, a cycle of sin that just goes on and on and on. It's inevitable and we are just powerless to escape from it. We need a redeemer. And there are many, many other examples given in scripture of ways that we need to be redeemed, the plight that we are in. And there's lots, I mean, just to highlight a couple, Romans 3, 24 states that all of us have fallen short of the glory of God, whether in thoughts, attitudes, behaviours, we need a redeemer. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.30 expresses that each of us are weak and foolish. We're unable to redeem ourselves. We need a redeemer. And Galatians chapter 3, 13 to 14, reminds us that we have broken God's law. We are just so far from his holy perfection. We need a redeemer. And each of these examples reminds us about our helplessness. That we can't redeem ourselves. We can't escape our situation by ourselves. We need a redeemer to come in to bring us into freedom, to bring us out of captivity. And this is our plight. It's the plight, to be honest, of the human race. It's the plight of West Lothian. It's the plight of the neighbourhood where you live. It's the plight of each one of us. And that's the bad news. But the bad news makes the good news even sweeter, even better. So secondly, let's look at the, the price. Price, how can we be redeemed? Well, as, as we've said, as enslaved sinners, we need a redeemer. This redeemer will pay the price for our sin and lead us from captivity to freedom. Enter in Jesus. At the birth of Jesus, it's prophesied that he is the redeemer. He is the saviour from the house of David who will visit and redeem his people. Now, with redemption, there's always a cost, a price to be paid. And John Stott, who was a pastor and writer, he points out that the first cost was actually the incarnation itself. God coming to earth in the man, Jesus Christ, entering into our condition to reach us. Galatians 4, 4 to 5 says, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law. And uh, a passage that many of us will have heard before is, it's just a wonderful passage about Jesus. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 it talks about Jesus who, being in very nature God, didn't consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. Do you know the, the incarnation had a great cost as Jesus, in the very nature God, made himself nothing and became like one of us. But he didn't stop there. Uh, as it continues, it says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So here we have the great cost of the, of the incarnation, God coming to dwell with us, and we have the ultimate price of the atonement, Jesus sacrificing himself to bring us back to God. 
And the Bible's clear that it was Jesus himself that was the price for our freedom. Jesus himself. There's verses in 1 Timothy, in Titus that, that express this, that Christ Jesus gave himself for us. Jesus said it himself to his disciples. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus gave himself. Jesus himself was the price for our freedom. And then finally, let's look at this word purchase. Let me explain what this is about. There's a verse in Revelation that is just a, a, a verse of worship to Jesus. It's trying to speak of the worthiness of Jesus. And it says this about him. With your blood, you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. Do you know, Jesus has purchased us. He has bought us with his blood. So what's the consequence of that? What does that mean? Well, this is quite simple. It means that we belong to him. We belong to Jesus. We are his. It's a simple point. We learn it as children. Our oldest daughter, Flora, recently got money as she lost her first ever tooth, which was very exciting. And now she is determined to buy something with that money that will become her, her treasured thing, her treasured possession. Do you know, she's only five, nearly six, but she knows, she understands that if she pays the price, if she gives over her money, then that thing, that object, whatever it is, will then belong to her. And let's not us forget that simple thing, that we belong to Jesus. We have been bought, in Colossians it talks about being um, brought from a kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the sun. Do you know, we're in his kingdom now. We are under his rule and his reign. Paul says that you're not your own, you were bought at a price. We've been purchased by God and so we are his. So as we finish today, I just want to say two things. Firstly, if you are you're a Christian, if you know Jesus, if you follow Jesus, today let us let us praise our Redeemer. Let us praise him. Let's be thankful for his sacrifice. Maybe you want to remind yourself that you are his, to, to commit yourself to him in that way, to thank him that you are his. Perhaps you want to pray that you will live as someone that has been brought from darkness into light. And my, my big hope is that as a Christian, you would know daily that Jesus loves you, that he gave himself for you and he is committed to you. Each day he is committed to you because you are his. He has redeemed you. Now, if you're not a Christian today, I would just encourage you to be honest about your plight, honest about your failings, your sin. God knows these things, but confess them to him. Be honest with God. Turn away from your sin and turn to Jesus. He paid the great price of his own life to set you free. Perhaps you'd like to join me in prayer. Uh, in your own heart as I pray. Lord Jesus, today we just want to thank you that you are the great Redeemer and you are the only Redeemer that is able to take us from our life of sin and our life of darkness into a life of freedom, 
of new hope and of light. Jesus, we confess our sin and we turn to you, our great Redeemer. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. bits of church family news to share with you before we go. Um, we'd love to wish Diane and Daniel the absolute best for their upcoming wedding next Saturday and I'd encourage you to pray for them and to bless them in any way you want to but from all of us uh, have a great day we're delighted for you and we look forward to your adventure together as a married couple. Along with that, Jeanette turns 80 on Tuesday. And Jeanette, we just want to wish you a really, really happy birthday and God's richest blessing for the year ahead. Pete is holding a golf day on the 29th of May. And if you are a guy in our church and you're interested in uh, playing golf, then uh, you can. if you know Pete, you can fire him a message. If you don't and you'd like any more information about that or the other things coming up, 
then just head to the King's Church website, www.kingschurchwl.org. Use the contact us um, function or you can fire us a message on Facebook and we'll put you in touch with the right people. On that note, Annalie has got a bit of an update for us on what the, uh, the women's group are up to this week. Hi everyone, it's a ladies' night on Wednesday and we're going to be taking advantage of the new relaxation of the rules. So um, if you'd like to come, we're going to be meeting at Mill Farm or Almond Valley Heritage Centre, postcode EH547AR. Uh, we'll meet there at 730 and we will split into small groups, probably of four, depending on how many people are there all together, and aiming for a walk of about an hour. So if you can make it, it'll be so good to see you. Finally, we've got a Garden Sunday taking place on the 2nd of May. And we're going to be gathering in gardens across Livingston and the wider area to do church together and to zoom in together as well as uh, restrictions ease and as we're able to gather in slightly bigger numbers. So if you'd like to join in with that, do let us know or we'll be in touch with you if you're regular with us. That's everything from us. Have a fantastic week and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Every day.